The following was written by Robert Wright and published in Dodge City, the Cowboy Capital, in 1913. As a closing word in this brief discussion of the blizzard in pioneer days, I will narrate one of the many experiences I have had with them. In the summer and fall of 1872, I was freighting supplies from Fort Dodge to Camp Supply, Indian Territory. Up to the middle of December, we had had no cold weather, plenty of grass all along the route. I loaded some 20 mule wagons with corn along about the 20th of December, and the outfit crossed the river at Fort Dodge and went into camp that night at Five Mile Hollow, about five miles from Fort Dodge. It had been a warm, pleasant day, and the sun disappeared in a clear sky. Along in the night, the wind whipped around in the north, and a blizzard set in. By morning, the draw that they were camped in was full of snow, and the air so full that one could not see from one wagon to the other. The men with the outfits were all old, experienced plainsmen, but the suddenness and severity of the storm rendered them almost helpless. They had brought along only wood enough for breakfast, and that was soon exhausted. Then they tried burning corn, but with poor success. As a last resort, they began burning the wagon. They used economy in their fire, but the second day saw no prospect of a letting up of the storm. In fact, it was getting worse hourly. It was then that P.G. Cook, now living at Trinidad, and another whose name escapes me, volunteered to make an effort to reach Fort Dodge, only five miles distant for succor. They bundled up in a way that it seemed impossible for them to suffer, and each mounting a mule started for the fort. The first few hours, Cook has told me, they guided the mules, and then recognizing that they were lost, they gave the animals a loose rein and trusted to their instinct. This was very hard for them to do, as they were almost convinced that they were going wrong all the time. But they soon got so numbed with the cold that they lost their sense of being. They reached the fort in this condition after being out eight hours. They each had to be thawed out of their saddles. Cook, being a very strong, vigorous man, had suffered the least, and soon was in a condition to tell of the troubles of his comrades. Major E.B. Kink, the quartermaster at the fort, immediately detailed a relief party and, with Cook at their head, started for the camp. The storm by this time had spent itself, and the relief party, with an ample supply of wood, reached them without great hardship, and the entire outfit, minus the three wagons which had been burned for fuel, were brought back to the fort. Cook's companion was so badly frostbitten that amputation of one of his limbs was necessary to save his life. Robert Wright Blizzards were a very real threat to all life on the frontier. The freezing temperatures and the complete loss of visibility could kill anyone quickly, despite their skill and experience. Even if somebody survived the blizzard, there was a good chance that frostbite would lead to amputation, as it happened to Cook's companion. Colonel Richard Irving Dodge, commander of Fort Dodge, would write about the blizzards he encountered, including the one during the winter of 1872-1873. A gentleman, competent and in a position to form a correct estimate, once told me that at least a hundred buffalo hunters had perished from cold in the country within 100 miles of the Arkansas River in two years. During the winter of 1872-1873, I was in command at Fort Dodge, Kansas. At least 70 capital amputations were performed by the post-surgeon on citizens who were buffalo hunters or railroad employees, whilst a much greater number of frozen men were sent east for treatment. I think it's safe to say that over 200 men in that vicinity lost hands or feet or parts of them.